Hey guys, so this video is going to be a remake of a relatively old one, and it was originally a collaboration with Meadow from Meadow's Piano, who I went to undergrad with. Um, they wrote a really good post about it, which I will hopefully link if I can still find it, which I assume you haven't deleted it, so hopefully that will be linked. Um, and you should also go f follow Meadow, because they're awesome, and a really fantastic collaborative pianist. Um, but anyway. <laughs> This is going to be practice room etiquette and practice room... how to use practice rooms properly, basically. Um, so every school has a booking system, or most schools. I, there's probably some that don't have a booking system, um, but every big school will, and most of the small schools will. Uh, that depends on the school. Like IU, we reserve a room for the full semester. You get a certain number of hours based on your degree. So I have three hours. My roommate who's a musicology student has one hour. Um, and then for the whole semester, whatever times you reserve, uh, are that that room is yours if you show up. Um, so use your booking system if you guys have one. Obviously you're not going to always be able to use it and that's fine because it's not going to hurt anyone if you don't show up. But don't just rely on trying to find rooms. If you have a system where you can actually get rooms guaranteed, use it. I don't, I, I don't understand why people don't. Um, that being said, you're not always going to be able to reserve all of the time that you want to practice, which is totally fine. Um, that's why there's rooms open. Like, you can just walk in. But, that being said, if someone kicks you out, you have to leave. And don't take your sweet time doing it. Like, pack up as quickly as you can and leave. Also, if you are going to your practice room that you've reserved, try to show up a few minutes early so you give this person a chance to leave. Um, they don't always know whether the person who's reserved the room is going to show up or not, so you can't expect them to just like magically put their instrument away, especially if they're like a clarinetist or an oboist or someone whose instrument comes into like 4,000 pieces. <laughs> so it, there's a general thing on both sides. Don't take forever to pack up, but also don't give this person like two seconds to pack up. Um, if you get kicked out, don't be an asshole. Don't like be super rude. And also don't be super rude kicking the person out. Obviously, human, just be a normal, decent human being. Politeness is great. Um, and people are much more likely to respond. Uh, so, if you're looking for an open room, obviously if the light's off, unless it's a cellist, and ba like, cellists practice in the dark. Um, so <laughs> make sure you're not walking in on anyone. But most of the time, if the light is off, you're probably okay. Um... If there's windows, obviously check and see if there's someone inside. Um, sometimes people leave lights on. If there's a person inside, don't go in. Um, don't interrupt someone's practice session unless it's a room that you've booked. Um, if someone's stuff is in there, generally it just means they went to the bathroom or went to grab a drink of water or something or just like taking a five minute break. Um, however, if you've circled around like a ton of times and it's been like 15 minutes and there's still someone's stuff in the room, generally there's like an unspoken rule that you can use the room. Um, in fact, IU just sent out an email saying that if that's the case, you can just move, like we're allowed to move things to the side and just use the room if it's been empty with someone's stuff in it for a very long time since it's April and it's jury season and it's recital season and there's so many people that need rooms. Um, I would be careful doing that just because people can get really upset. Um, but if you're gonna go away for 20 minutes, you forfeit your room. Um, so the other fun thing is that generally there aren't enough stands for the number of rooms, which is fine because a lot of the times Piano players or singers don't need stands. I mean, sometimes singers need stands. But there's a, there's a group of people who don't generally need stands. Um, 
So that means you can go around and look. Um, my first source is always empty rooms, because that way I'm not interrupting anyone. Um, but sometimes you have to kind of look into every room and see. Um, try to be as subtle as possible, obviously. Don't just, like, stare into your into someone's room. But <clears throat> sometimes you're going to have to knock on a door and say, hey, are you using this stand? Um, the other side of that is if you know you're not going to use the stand that is in your room, put it in the hall. Because then you guarantee that your practice session won't be interrupted by someone knocking on your door. If you don't do that, you have really no right to be upset because people need stands and you didn't take the two seconds to put it outside your door indicating that you didn't need it. Um, I try to not have quintet rehearsals and like chamber rehearsals in practice rooms just because that means it's I have to go find five stands or however many stands I need and that's a pain and it's just very difficult. Um, and it makes it really hard for other people to practice, and I try to be a decent human being and let other people practice. Um, so if you have a way to book, like, specific rehearsal spaces or classrooms and things, things that have stands in them naturally, um, that's really great. Obviously that's not always possible, so don't be super worried about it if you can't, but it's really nice to like think about the people that are also practicing and try not to hoard things. It's basic basically don't be a dragon and hoard things. I just said that out loud. <laughs> um a bas basically practice room etiquette is hu basic human decency. Don't take forever to leave a room that you didn't book. Don't kick people out in rude ways. Obviously, you have to tell them that it's your room, but you don't have to be obnoxious about it. And don't stare into practice rooms. I I can't even... The practice rooms in University of Toronto have, like, really big glass windows, and the music students themselves know not to stare. Like, they'll look in to see who's playing or just to see if it's someone they know, uh, but... They won't kind of, like, stare at you like you're a zoo animal, but the tours will. And I can't even tell you how many times I've been practice. I was practicing down there, and a tour would come through, and all of these people would just stare at me like I was a zoo animal. I'm sitting there like, hi, can I go back to my work? So don't, don't do that. It's really, really disconcerting. Um, a lot of people here will put pieces of paper over the windows because our windows are really small. Um, but that's not always possible if you have bigger windows. Um, so yeah, basically, don't be an asshole. That's, that's basically the rule. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you aren't in music school yet, this is something you won't need to worry about yet. But once you are in music school, it'll be very helpful to know the rules because... These aren't things that people ever talk about. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good week, and I will see you next week.